guys want to hang out for the next couple days? You're going to want to, I'll tell you why. My buddy Josh Jones, you guys have seen him on the Bilge Podcast, just money angler. He has caught more 10 pound bass than anyone I've known over my whole career. And he caught like five in the last like seven days. So it's like absolutely ridiculous. But we're also gonna be fishing with my favorite fisherman's favorite fisherman. So Josh Jones, Kyle Hall, if you guys don't know who those guys are, look them up. They're absolute hammer sticks. They're excellent with their front facing sonar. And I'm really fired up to like learn more and more. Every single time I go down there, hang out with those boys, I'm learning more and more and adding more and more to my fishing repertoire. So I don't even know what's gonna happen over the next couple of days. All I know is we're gonna be around a lot of big bass. We're gonna throw a lot of swim baits. We're gonna try out my new spoon. I got some prototype swim baits to run through. We're gonna be hanging out with the boys. Let me uh, grab a bunch of food here. Let's see what we got in the fridge. We're gonna load up the Bass Pro Cabela's. I don't know if I'm gonna go with the, I think we're gonna leave that one home. We're gonna go with the big boy. This is the 80 quart, I believe. Yeah, 80 quart. Yeah, she ordered it for sight fishing, you know, outside of the tournament scene where you can hop up on it and just kind of look down on the fish. This thing is legit. Everyone makes a good cooler these days. That one is awesome. It's got some really cool features to it. It's like that thick. Hey, so hey, let's can look. Can I ask you a question? You were saying like uh, you've been going down, hanging out with Josh and Kyle and learning a lot. Why is that not helping you in your tournaments? Because you've been soaking it up in tournaments. <laughs> Damn. There you have it. Oh, that's my little nephew over there. Forget what she said. That's my little nephew over there, Boston. Look at him, dude. He's money. So, like, I don't know. He looks like one of those college uh, fishermen. Look at the hair, dude. Look at the mustache. How old are you? Man, I'm yeah, I'm 19. 19 years old. Do you, at 19 years old, do you have any life advice you can give the viewers right now? Absolutely not. Let's don't do anything I did. <laughs> Boston starting a new job out in uh, West Texas as a ranch hand. What? Huh? No, I'm working on a feedlot. That's the same thing, isn't it? Now let's load this cooler up and let's get on the road, Charles. So, stuff chicken. I'm gonna be cooking for the boys too because I'll be staying at their place. So, I always like to bring a little something uh, as a kind of a, a favor back. Big old giant fillets, how about that? Let's load that up. It's really cool, like when you're done fishing tournaments and you're invited to, you know, go fish a, a lake. I imagine that's what it's like normally fishing. I'm trying to think back before I fished for a living. I used to get so hyped up for fishing trips. And like, I got that same feeling right now. A, I'm going to a big bass factory, OHIV. And two, I get to hang with the boys, so. Um, but yeah, just packing all this meat. This is, uh, this is a really cool feeling. It almost feels like I'm going on a golf trip or something like that. Let's get out of here. Like I said, you guys get to hang out the last, uh, the next couple days. So don't know what to expect. Two and a half hours to the southwest of here, going out to the desert. Water temperature should be like in the 70, 70 plus. It's completely post spawn. And I know they really get on big gizzard shads. So we're gonna throw nothing but giant swim baits, nothing but big spoons. And I think Johnny wants to do some long form videos where we sit down, do interviews. So you guys are gonna get the behind the scenes look about, uh, of all that. All right, we got the food loaded up. Let's, uh, let's rip out of here, Charlie. All right, OHIV, here we come. Yo, any 10 pounders today? Uh, I broke one off right at the bug. That was bad on a bed fish. Just caught one. Just caught three on a frog right now. Um, anywhere from eight to 10. I don't know what I was saying. And then all of a sudden, dude, it was being real weird. Oh my God, dude, there's a five trying to eat it out of its mouth. Um, then all of a sudden, dude, I think that's the biggest fish I've ever fucking seen. Did one lap around the bed. Wow. And it was anywhere from 13 to 16 or 17. I don't fucking know. Wow. Fucking giant. Wow. All right, in hour 10, I'll be there. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry, buddy. Awesome. Can't wait. And all these ranches are so much greener than the last time I was here. I was just here like three weeks ago. Caught an 11 pounder. That was a good trip. This trip should be even better, but it's so beautiful out here in West Texas. I mean, look, it's 86 degrees outside. Like, beautiful. Oh, it feels good, dude. Alright, so these little small town uh, communities here in, in uh, West Texas, apparently they've got a sense of humor. Look at this sign right here. Uh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Kudos, Coleman, Texas. Population like 600. <laughs> go see if Josh's door is open. I want to drop off all this meat in the refrigerator here. Uh, 
I don't think I'm supposed to be looking at these, Josh. Yeah, every time he posts, these are prototypes, so I know for a fact I'm not supposed to be looking at these. Ooh, those are nice. Who makes those, Josh? That's pretty nice. Bigs custom page. Looks good. All right, dropped off the food at Josh's place. Now we go fishing. All right, we made it. OH Ivy, it's probably my most favorite, hands down. It used to be Lake Fork, but not anymore. It's definitely OH Ivy. It's only two hours, 45 minutes from my house, but especially this place right here, Elm Creek RV and Campground. The guy, David, who runs it is like top notch. He's got a restaurant there, so breakfast, lunch and dinner, burgers, all that stuff. This is by far the hottest lake, probably in the country, definitely in the state, but probably in the country. I mean, I just talked to Josh <laughs> just now. Josh says Kyle is probably the best forward-facing sonar guard out there, period. Anyways, about an hour ago, he caught a 14-pounder, just a 14-pounder on a, on a Tuesday, no big deal. Did you catch a 14-pounder just now? <laughs> yeah, he says. That's awesome. I was just talking about you. Where's your boat, in the water? Yeah. In there. Okay. Oh, she is? Yeah, the guy cluttered and left. So. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you guys are going to get to see a 14 pounder in person. I'll bet you a lot of you guys haven't seen a 14 pounder ever in person up close. But thanks to Kyle, we're about to uh, we're about to go take a look at one. 14 pounder is my personal best. And I know he's caught like 15 and 16 down in here. So, how about that? That's a nice little OHIV welcome. 14 pounder. Let's go check it out. Are you going down there, Kyle? Yeah. All right, cool. Meet <laughs> There's a 14 pounder in there. Yeah, Kyle caught it. Kyle's not down here yet, but he kind of gave us permission to hop in his boat and look at it. I'm going to do it anyway. Come on. Let's take a look. Oh, oh my, my gosh. That thing is freaking huge, Kyle. I haven't seen a 14 in a long time, dude. Wow. Oh my gosh, dude. That is an absolute unit. It looks like a 15. Yeah, that is a giant fish. Good job, Kyle Hall. 14 pounder, 14 and a half. Look at that thing. Look how big that fish is. Just an absolute unit. And that's why you travel to OH Ivy and you hire Kyle Hall and Josh Jones for fish like that. Charles, is that the biggest fish you ever oh, seen? Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. How big that fish is, dude. Look at that big, dude. It's so big. All right, that fires me up to do the same exact thing. Wow, that's insane. But that's not the biggest you caught this year. Don't you have a 15 or 16 in the boat this year? No, what? Last year. What's your biggest out of here? 16, 10. 16, 10. So that one we just saw, I popped in here and we looked at the fish without your permission. I hope that's all right. Yeah. So 1610, and that's a 14... 1440. 1440, dude. Imagine putting two more pounds on that thing, dude. That's like a, a mini bus plus two pounds. That's insane, man. Absolutely insane. Uh, so what's the protocol for releasing this thing? Uh, we're going to go over to where we caught her. Yeah. And, uh, Put her right back because we're kind of in that reproducing kind of yeah. stage. So just in case she hasn't dumped eggs, then she could dump them right back where she, back, right back where she was. I actually think she has. Oh really? Most of them. A little she double may, time? She, she little may, double? Yeah, she may have some left, but yeah. I think she don't most of them. She's pretty... Spewing out powder? Pretty empty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Alright, this is it. Elm Creek. Never stayed over here before. Not in this little area. Now the three of us dun, 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 are gonna be staying here. I'll be sleeping on the table. In all seriousness, Johnny and I are gonna go film a long form video or part, just like a little tiny part of a long form video. After seeing that 14 pounder, I mean, that gives me really, 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 really high hopes of catching a big giant one. While you guys, Charles, are gonna do a little bit of editing. So we're fishing, you guys are editing. How is that fair? I don't know. I don't even know how the fuck I got this in here. Sorry, Charles. <laughs> Okay. 
Gas grills, man. Gas grills. Oh, yeah. Everything is bigger in Texas. The sun rises, the fish out there, grasshoppers. It feels good being out here, just nice dry air. Woke up this morning, we're gonna go meet up with the boys, Josh and Kyle, and let's see what the rest of the guys are up to. They'll be here at the little cafe, it's pretty legit. Let's go wake up Josh and go pound off his camper. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the part spread. <laughs> he said, I got 20 minutes, man. Look at Randy. Oh, uh, you killed me again, man. You killed what, me. What kind of breakfast do you want, Johnny? The big Texan? I can't do this anymore, what kind of breakfast do you want? I need to eat bre bre dinner at 6 o'clock, go to bed at 8 o'clock. <laughs> no more tornado videos. Got it. Alright, right, got it. Great to have you. Yeah, appreciate it. David's a man, he owns this How whole joint, and he always finds a room for us, so there you, you gotta go. appreciate that. <laughs> you gonna order? Uh, yeah. Jordan wants the grande plate. Grande plate? Uh, I think so, uh, he wants it scrambled. Scrambled. Just in time for blind bait season. The blind bait bite's about to go wide open. Dude, last night was terrible. Uh, you know the top hatch? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I couldn't find the thing, okay? So me and Randy are melting up there. So I had to grab three pairs of pliers. I think I broke it and I, I sweat till about 12 o'clock at night. No way. Finally, I almost, I tried to do the emergency and then all these bugs came in. Oh no. So yeah, that's why I'm, I'm a little freaking tired. <laughs> uh. Well, tonight you could shack up with me. Hello. I don't ask for much, but I think we just need, you know, like a normal schedule where we eat dinner around like anywhere from five to nine, and then we wake up early. And here, he come, here comes one of them right now. There it is. What's up, fellas? How'd you sleep? You dream of Bigfoot? Yeah, I'm saying. I actually didn't sleep very good because I dreamed I had a snake in the corner of my room all night. <laughs> <laughs> it was the shittiest dream in the world. I woke up and I was like looking for a snake. Are you serious? You know how you, sometimes you wake up and you, you wonder... What? <laughs> Come on now. Production. A lot of moving parts for little YouTube videos. Pretty fortunate though to have a couple tandem uh, Z21s like this. That way we could shoot boat to boat. You know, you guys and Johnny will be in this boat today, kind of filming me. The goal today, and this is a behind the scenes look, the goal today is to get one of those really, really sick, like slow mo 10, 11, 12, 13 pounders, hopefully with a swim bait in its mouth, but like to catch one and just see that thing jump, man. And I, if you're like me, you like replaying those videos literally over and over and over again. And it's just something cool about, you know, seeing obviously a, a, a double digit fish, but seeing a double digit fish surface, it's like one of those slow-mo shots of Discovery Channel during Shark Week. So that's what we're after today. And it, it, it doesn't come easy. Although we're on the best lake in the country for big bass, it's not easy. So getting this slow-mo shot is gonna take a lot of work today. So you guys are gonna hang out and just kind of watch how we do it. I'll tell you, behind the camera, it ain't pretty. I mean, look, from the, just from the get-go, I mean, the boat's a disaster. It's kind of how my life is, it's just a complete disaster, but only you, you guys get to see the cool stuff, all the highlights of it. Brought you a present. 
All right, like I said, it don't come easy. So I'm gonna hop in my boat. And you guys are gonna sit here and watch me for one moment. But literally, we're gonna fish the next four hours in a big swim bait, and we're looking for one moment, for two moments. And Johnny gets to look through the lens the whole time, watching, just, just watching today. We've All been up. we've been on this lake for what? 10, 10, 12 days? 12 days. And we're filming for that moment, so. Yeah. Whenever somebody's Five like, seven. oh, dude, that sounds so fun, Five your job, it's like, mm. It's a lot of hard work. Yeah. Charles knows. I need to get that white one, the G Master one, but it's 2,500 bucks. Oh, that's a giant, dude. Come here, come here. Woo! Oh my gosh, dude. Slurped it down like it was a quarter ounce buzz bait. Oh my gosh. Dude, that thing's like a 12 pound frame. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real tough job out here, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then the second cast, boom. Well, funny. we'll see if we got the hook set. You're running your GoPro, right? That's the thing. When he doesn't have the GoPro, we're screwed. That was the craziest topwater, by the way. It just sucked it down. Well, now I know I need to be filming your topwater. Just made your job that much harder today, dude. No, friggin', I'm, I, I, I want to. I need to get a 10 pounder topwater bat, man. We're gonna pick up the patrol motor for the first time, which means we're gonna move spots. That was our first spot. This, this lake's kind of small, and you just kind of rotate through the same points, whether it's pre-spawn or post-spawn like it is now. But I'm gonna have you hop in my boat real quick. I just wanna show you this fish, because whether we're fishing a tournament, or filming a series like this, or fun fishing, whatever it is, the fish you catch always kind of can give you clues. And let's let, let's take a look at this fish real quick. I'm gonna show you the size of it, and then also, don't fall. Oh my God. <laughs> but I just wanna show you like the clues, so, um, you know, the time of year, we're like in between the spawn and, and post-spawn, you know, the air temperature's like in the 80s, 90s. So it's getting warmer and warmer, but like the size of this fish compared to its body, the head compared to its body, I mean, it's typical post-spawn, but look, just look how big. I mean, like yesterday, that 14 pounder they had, I mean, the head was literally the exact same size. Look at this head. Look at the size of this freaking mouth and head. It's almost bigger than that 14 pounder yesterday, but then you go to the belly, look how skinny she is, poor girl but look how long that fish is. I mean, that's probably the longest fish I've ever caught. I mean, it's just so long. And that right there is a definite teener size frame. I mean, look how freaking long that thing is. It just, you know, it just suffered the, the, the spawning ritual. And here, after the clues I've had talking to Josh and Kyle and, you know, learning over the years, these fish will spawn two, three times. You know, when they get rid of all their eggs, get rid of all their roe, they become that skinny and they're just exhausted from the spawn. So we got our live wells, our nitro live wells pumping really hard. Uh, she's fine. I want to weigh it here in a little bit. I want to weigh it and then uh, get a length on it and then release it back in the same area. But she's gonna chill for a little bit. I mean, that aeration system, she's upright, she's awesome. Just an old, absolute tank of a fish, just an old soldier of a fish. We're gonna let her ride a little bit, but that's a clue. It's just a post-spawn, secondary point, topwater fish. So we're gonna keep on running that kind of stuff in hopes that Johnny pays attention on these topwater bites. Look at him, he's fishing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at I am just jacking with him. Hopefully we get one of those really cool top water bites or, or you know slow motion shots. But that's not quite 10 pounds and we're looking for those double digit fish. All right, let's go to the next spot. Randy, get the net. You heard it here, folks. We got a film for a boat flip of a teener. I just wanted to double check. It's hard to judge it right now. When there's no wind, 
and there's no clouds, do you speed up or slow down? Like that's the question. I mean, I've got a little, a literal 12 or 13 pounder that came up on both my baits, both the top water and the glide. Nipped at it. And we're gonna go back over there and try to show them something different. I don't know if it's slow is the answer or is fast the move. Oh man, he was pretty strong. That's the first time he's actually swam like towards safety. Usually he just freaks out and just right, swims right. wherever. Looks like his right paw might be a little slow. All right, it's getting hot, man. We uh, fished a few spots. We ended up back where we started, and this is where you know I caught that nice one, and I had several with it. But you come back when the sun is directly overhead. It is flat, calm, and of course everything has changed. It's really hard to get a bite right now. So I'm gonna release this big giant one uh, right back on her spot. And then we're gonna go head over to lunch. So let's go check this thing out. It looks like a redfish. It's so, just so huge. It looks like a drum. Gosh, I mean like, ah, uh, huge, huge, huge head. Johnny, look at the size of that freaking melon. Right, okay, can I read, got, we can't read the Yeah, fish. come on, come on. And this is how we do hero releases. Look at the head on that thing. So long. Woo! She wanted that shade. That was a weird release. That's cool. She's strong. Go eat some food. Oh, there she is. Look, look, look. That was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. She like rolled and rolled on the surface, and then... that's cool. All right. Well, we got to make that one our little one today. And from what we've seen, I mean, we saw a legit 12 or 13 pounder come up and nip my glide bait several times. On that bank over there, there was a legit 12 plus pounder. I mean, they're just like floating high and just kind of in that post-spawn weird phase. But I know there'll be a window later today, especially if that if the clouds come and the winds come and um, maybe it'll give them a little confidence to come out and eat some of these big baits. All right, lunchtime. Across my deck, doesn't it look bigger? Uh, I've never even looked at it. At lunch here, Josh and a, a fine young gentleman over there are kind of in a peeing contest here on whose deck is wider. And it sounds like he's got a 2015 uh, Legend bass boat with 550 horsepower. Anyways, he's uh, doing this whole number <laughs> and saying his deck is wider than Josh Jones's deck. So I'm gonna go out there and help him with the tape. He wants to prove that his deck is wider. Look, <laughs> look, what do you got there, Josh? A sewing measuring thing. Let's go, come out. What are y'all gonna do? Moment of truth. Probably a little bit more, like an inch. <laughs> All right, a little midday update here. A lot of followers. I thought this wind would get some of these fish to commit a little bit, but Nitro Boats just texted me and said they needed a little uh, boater's safety week uh, video. So we tucked away in the corner there and did a little safety video. Charles, why don't you play that video right now? I know you're going to be cutting it anyway, so remember this safety tip right down here. Whether you're on a river system or a lake, that current on the upside and that current on the downside of that dam brings a lot of bait fish to the area. In turn, brings a lot of bass. In turn, brings a lot of boaters. So don't forget to wear your PFD when you're fishing around dams because oftentimes there's swift current, there's turbulent water. A lot of times they'll release water without a notice. So you always want to be safe. You'll always see me wearing my inflatable PFD when I'm fishing on the top side or the bottom side of those dams. Excellent places to fish. Can be a little turbulent. You guys stay safe out there. All right, let's get back to fishing. Have you caught anything? Whoa. In 11. One. That's a big one, dude. See, I'm not lying. There it is. Take a picture. <laughs> so if you do find one, mark it and go, because I guarantee they're all in bed. God, so many big Look at that thing. Same frame as that one I caught. Same length. God, that's a giant. 
Dude, you've caught a 10 pounder every single day you've been out for the last 60 <laughs> days. No, one that one I'm missing that. That's 60. You suck, that's six, dude. This is 66 <laughs> days and 67 double digits. Wow, that's insane. That's awesome, dude. Oh, shit. <laughs> Three boats. We gonna bang them up. That drone filming like rejuvenated me because I am I'm beat down. Folks at home, folks at home, we are at day 10 in the desert. And I've messed up. I've missed what three nine to ten pounds. Got her big one! Giant! Giant, dude! That's a freaking hoss! Oh gosh, I can't stop it, dude! Oh, he ain't that big! He ain't that big! He ain't that big! Oh, yeah, he is! Yeah, he is that big! Yeah, she is that big! Oh, I can't move from it! I can't move from it! Oh, come here! Come here, come here! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Can't both flip that one. <laughs> oh, it's a giant dude. Smoke the glide bait. <laughs> wow, what a bite. That was awesome. Oh, like the furthest cast. That's like an eight plus. Big one. Fatty, dude. I'm just making my way out that way and I was like, oh, there's a nice wind blow point. And that's a freaking giant one. It's nice, it's an eight pounder. I'm gonna go ahead and release it. Crush the swim bait. It's a heavy fish. I almost boat flipped it. Almost. All right, girl. Whoa, oh, whoa, dude. Whoa. <laughs> I think it was a little like Malinois missile. That was cool, dude. Crush it. Alright, well, what, what's going on over there? People swimming on the ramp, how about that? Yeah, we caught an 8 and 9 today, it's not nothing, it's not nothing. But for, you know, this lake standards, it's just okay before i go in here i, I wanted to run through some uh some latest samples of the top hook swim bait we changed a few things on it and they sent them to me while i was at a tournament last week so i need to i need to run through it right now and make sure everything's tip top just kind of looking at these changes and i got a couple different versions here you know they're both top hooks but there's you know a shallow one and a deep one plus a little tail change so we've got all these different versions out and this is just one version but we got all these different versions and uh, gotta find out which one's best. They ordered them in kind of the uh, real loud colors so that you could really see, you know, what the bait's doing. Ooh, wow, that looks good. It cannot, absolutely cannot roll because this style of swim bait, doesn't matter which brand it is, but this style of swim bait, the more, the more you bring it, the more it wants to roll. So we're constantly trying to combat that. That's all I want to do. I just want to run this a little bit so I can report back to Bass Mafia tonight. All right, I had to pack up a little bit this morning because we're checking out of this room. Maybe David will have another room for us tomorrow. I don't know, so it's up in the air. I don't, and, and it depends on how today goes. But Johnny, you know, with the big camera, we don't know that we got enough to finish his video. So it's all kind of a big old freaking orchestration of big fish shots and this and that. So today I think is a determining factor whether we got to stay another night or we could go back home. So I packed up my stuff either way. We got to get out of this place. We're gonna go out and try to catch another big giant fish or two and uh, try to get that slow-mo shot again. You guys are gonna stay here. 
here. Look at a little editing station over here. That's Charles' editing station. A little bit of caffeine, a little nicotine. <laughs> You're ready to go. So you guys are gonna hang out over here. I'm gonna throw the chesty on and uh, we'll roll that footage out, but uh, hopefully we catch a 10 plus pounder and get Johnny the shot that he needs to get. So and it's kind of weird, right? Like, so like there's two different types of videos in my head on top of all the professional stuff that I do fishing wise, but there's two different uh, types of videos that real long form, very cinematic, the big fish jumps and all that stuff. And that's cool, you know, and uh, appreciate appreciate you guys supporting that kind of video. Just takes a lot more time, a lot more work and resources. But uh, these type of videos, when I'm talking to you directly and telling you to stay behind, those are fun too, because they happen daily. So got my black rifle RTD here. I'm gonna smoke this and we are gonna get out there. I'm gonna go start on that point right there because the wind's blowing on it. So yesterday we caught a big one late, um, eight plus pounder late on a glide bait. We're gonna pick up right where we left off, but you guys are gonna stay behind. So I'll see you later. And uh, yeah, I'll throw the chest to you on. You won't miss a thing. All right, say that again now. kind of a surprise trip we don't know I mean obviously we're working when we get there but I wonder what type of work we'll pull out the passport all right I gotta go that's a cool surprise okay bye heck yeah that's a nice little phone call going to Europe in July June July I forget when's ICAST I don't know sweet that's cool thanks Bass Pro I just met one of the dudes here. I was rolling down the ramp right here and this guy comes up to me and he goes, dude, you're single-handedly responsible for my swim bait addiction. I'm like, what's up, dude? He goes, my name's Matt. He goes, I'm a salesman in the oil field. I was like, dude, what do you do? Just like sell, sell shit, fish and work out? And he's like, pretty much. Look at this dude. He's like freaking stout. Look at this guy. <laughs> Where are you from, dude? Uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. Lafayette, but live in Midland Live in now? Midland. Right on, dude. Him and his dog, uh, Nelly. Two-year-old, what kind of lab is it? Fox Red, British Fox lab. Fox Red, yeah, dude. He's in good shape. He like the water, huh? I taught him to be afraid of the water since we were in Florida the first part of the year. I didn't want him to be alligator bait. He knows how to swim, but he doesn't, he doesn't like to do it. Oh, Nelly, that's cool, dude. It's been hot today, I ain't gonna lie. Dude, we, we had lunch, we had a big old lunch. I had a grilled ham and cheese. 20 minutes later, I'm like, man, it's kinda hot. And then Johnny talked me into going to the room where I took a nap and fell asleep. So yeah, I'll admit it. But we're heading back out, it's like five o'clock. So we're gonna have like three hours of hardcore fishing. So we haven't quite got that hero shot yet. So we got about three hours to get it done. Probably like 72 degrees, like a 30 degree drop. And look at that front line right there. That is so awesome out here in West Texas. Kind of in the middle of the desert. And this is just like gorgeous. Right, Johnny? Yeah. <laughs> look at Randy likes it. You guys were here. Yeah. Great weather difference. <laughs> Fishing's tough right now. It's really it's tough, but we're gonna keep grinding. I'm only taking one bite. Come on, baby. It's gonna happen. Oh, 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 shit. Yeah, 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 I got you, I got you, I got you. It's okay, it's okay. okay. Stay right I'm there, stay, him. stay, stay, buddy. Ah, st ah, stay, stay, Randy. Well, you don't think you clip Randy, it stay. and then no, you no, just no, pull no, it out? No, 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 no. Stay, Randy, stay. It's okay, it's okay, Randy. It's okay, stay. <laughs> stay, stay, Randy, stay. 
Ah, uh, it's okay, it's okay, it's just a nose piercing. There it is. Okay, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Tough guy. Yeah, that's crazy. You good, Randy? Thank you. A little nose piercing? Good boy. Yeah, he's okay. Alright. <laughs> I was just, I just saw this on TV the other day. It was one of the tournaments where a guy got it past the barb through his finger. Two ways to do it. You either grab your side cutters and cut the point and the barb completely off. The only problem with that is when it breaks through, it kind of jolts the whole nose of the finger and it hurts really bad. Or my favorite is when it goes through the nose or the finger is you pinch the barb down real tight so, so the barb's completely gone. And then you just back it on out and Randy, uh, Randy found out the hard way that those hooks bite back on, buddy. Yeah, you're good. Look at him. He forgot about it. Dude, look. He put. He, pulled it. <laughs> he did, dude. He pulled this wake bait in half through his nose. Bubba, he need, he's pretty good about hooks. This is the first time. I don't even know how he did what it. What kind of swim bait is that even? It's a wake bait. I mean. You want a stick? You want a stick, buddy? <laughs> good boy. So I'm going to end up just putting everything like right here. It's like it didn't even happen, dude. No, yeah. Well, he's, <laughs> we're lucky he's not bleeding and Hey, hey, stop getting yeah. the face, dude. Well, just because you're on Texas's best bass lake, big bass lake, and there are literally thousands of 10 pounders on this place does not mean you're gonna put them in the boat a three day span. Josh and Kyle, the superstars on this lake, they called it an early day today. They got off the water like at noon. Fish are right in transition. It's literally like the type of bite we've experienced on tour the last couple of weeks here. I threw that, uh, that old school wake bait. This is a nine inch wake bait. I caught a couple nice ones on it and I had a big one just boil on it. I got a piece of it and lost it. So that was my hero shot and it's still swimming. So this place gets a lot of pressure. Uh, we threw a little uh, glide as well. It seems like lately a lot of guys have been sending me glide baits, which I'm so appreciative over. This one's a clutch. Uh, kind of ugly, really. I mean, the finish on it, just kind of kind of ugly and bland, but the action on it is so money. Caught a big one on it yesterday. I can't get away from OG Tater Hog, Hog Father. I got that one tied up as well. Had a lot of followers on that. But that was a problem this week is just a lot of followers and not a lot of committers. So I'd love to be here in a about two weeks when I'm down on the Sabine River catching eight pounds of bass, nine pounds of bass for five. I'd love to be here because I know that gizzard shad spawns is about to bust wide open. So that's it for fishing. Time to go eat some dinner. So yeah, he didn't catch a 10 pounder, but I did this week. degree swing after fishing two and a half days out here on this pond it was like 102 yesterday it was like 90 the day before it's like 60 something degrees out here charles is holding the camera in a t-shirt he's shivering and he's got goosebumps and yeah it's pretty crazy I, I don't know what the bites like out there right now it's either gonna be really really good for some guys or really really bad probably really really bad because i say that because the water temperature skyrocketed up and then now it just really falling and we thought there was going to be two tournaments out there today but we just learned after having breakfast in there there's actually five tournaments going on out there on this small pond so with that i'm gonna take off i'm gonna get back to fort worth it's trait's birthday this weekend so we're gonna head over there but uh thank you guys for hanging out it was a lot of fun we got to see a lot of cool stuff it started out with a 14 pounder caught a couple nice ones and uh we saved a dog's nose uh did a little surgery there but uh thank you guys again for hanging out uh these videos are always fun these little weekly videos are always fun but drop a comment down below let us know what uh you know what you guys think of this style of video again we're on like week number three or four of this style of video so let me know if you want want us to keep them coming or switch it up a little bit either way i'm probably gonna keep this path and uh and keep going strong with charlie and john and speaking of johnny it's like eight o'clock and johnny's not up yet why don't we wake him up here check this out violent wake up throwing rocks at his camper come on Randy 
how's your nose this morning? Look at Randy's nose. <laughs> Randy, don't lift his hand. What? <laughs> Look at his mouth. <laughs> he looks good. Alright, with that, we're out. Thank you guys for hanging out. That was a lot of fun. Until next time.